There was once an airline and the name of it was Interflug. Interflug was the state airline for the GDR, the DDR, East Germany. When Germany was two countries, the eastern part, that was their state airline and um, something very unfortunate and big news happened in 1972, August, when Interflug Flight 450 which was flying from Berlin to Bulgaria, crashed in what became the worst air disaster in German history. And so what was going on in 72? You had Nixon in the White House, you had Brezhnev in the Kremlin, and you had a new leader in East Berlin, Erich Honecker, hadn't been in power long when this very major air disaster took place. And they're doing some mowing around here, so I don't know when they're going to fire up the lawnmowers. We'll try to get as much in as we can before that time. Behind this green fence here is one little memorial spot for Flight 450. You can see that they've got a picture of the crash here, so you can kind of make out the wings and the landing gear. That's essentially just this the uh, bulk of the airplane which as the sign tells us ended up landing or falling really right behind there's a cross back there today and it says that right behind that cross is where the bulk of that plane ended up it was <clears throat> a bit of an unusual crash in that the plane broke up before it hit the ground and the reason for that breakup was because shortly after departing the Schönefeld airport in Berlin which was East Germany's main airport the plane had a very severe fire on board and the crew didn't have any way of knowing what was going on with that fire or even that it was a big deal and so rather than landing somewhere closer by to their their location they decided to turn back around and try to land again in Berlin where they had taken off from that turned out to be too far and the fire was just getting very very intense to the point that it essentially melted the airplane and the aircraft became uncontrollable it broke up mid-air and that spot back there and these woods that you see behind me is mainly where all of the different um, pieces and parts debris came down in this little forested area right here. And legend has it that the captain of Interflug Flight 450 actually saved many lives on the ground because even though his aircraft was not controllable by the point that he took his last actions he did apparently increase power to the four jet engines of that soviet made Ilyushin 62 plane and that apparently gave it enough to, enough direction to go instead of toward the train station to go into this forest that you see right here outside the town little town of Königs Wusterhausen just south of Berlin so there's another little picture on this corner here of the forest that's uh, all fenced in, but you can also read more about the flight that crashed here in August 1972 at the start of a um, pretty good period for the GDR, the DDR, when things were on the rise looking good and this crash was major news a major event which had a lot of attention from the government the new leader Erich Honecker who wanted to of course make sure that they kind of controlled the information that was uh, getting released especially to the East German public so it became a bit of a, uh, or more than a bit of a sensitive topic that had to be really handled carefully in order to, in today's parlance, control the narrative, you might say. 
So we'll walk out to the road here <clears throat> that runs by this forest and we will see the third bit of um, memorial, I guess you might say, for this flight, which, um, as I said, even though it's the largest disaster, air disaster in Germany's history, there's really not much here to commemorate it. There's basically the two little signs that we've already seen and then the other little memorial out by the road that I'll show you. I believe I mentioned that this interflug flight was destined for the country of Bulgaria, which during the Cold War, that was a place that citizens of East Germany could travel to with no issue. There wasn't much concern on the part of the GDR or East, East German government about their citizens flying off, spending some time on a beach at the Black Sea, for example, a pretty common thing for East German citizens to have done at that time. So here is the road outside of the forest, back in here where most of Flight 450 came down in pieces. And you can see the main memorial, we might say, at the crash site which looks like this. You can see somebody has left some flowers and a candle here. And it just says to remember the 156 people who died here August of 1972. So all 156 people on board, including the crew, perished in this, the largest air disaster in German history. And there's not much to see, but it is always kind of interesting to come to these places and imagine what it must, must have been like here on that day when this great tragedy took place. 